Fora TV. The world is thinking. Were you not uh, surprised yesterday when you listened to Prime Minister Putin and he told uh, the audience here, please be warned, uh, don't have a state-owned economy because it kills entrepreneurial spirit and it kills um, competition. Uh, what, what change we have in the world? What, 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 how do you feel about it? And, and, and you soon will have to defend a state-owned um, bad bank here. Well, I actually favor that. Uh, keep in mind that this is the first I'm glad to hear Prime Minister Putin come out for free enterprise. That, uh, and uh, I hope it works for him. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, but let's be serious here. That one of the decisions that's being debated in Washington is should there be, because so many of the banks are in trouble now, this started with deflation and housing prices and, and securities on mortgages, right? Now you've got deflation in the value of assets generally causing a lot of our banks to be in trouble. So some people are saying, well, we ought to nationalize the banks. Others are saying we ought to have a bad bank. I don't like that term, bad bank, because the only really toxic assets here are the bundled securities of subprime mortgages and any anything that was spun out of that. These other loans that are in trouble are just because the asset values are below what their traditional value would be. So it shouldn't be called the bad bank. In the Depression, the United States had a system to buy houses that were in trouble and home mortgages, and then they were resold onto the market as the economy began to pick up, and the taxpayers recovered all their money. So if we have to sell Treasury notes to foreigners now, which we have to do because we doubled the debt of America in the last eight years with a policy that I, those of you who are Americans know I strongly oppose, um, other countries have to finance this recovery, but it's good for them because we can't buy exports until we grow again. I, th I think we should have a bank to hold these undervalued assets clean up the bank's balance sheets, get them to loan again, and then in a disciplined fashion put the assets back on the market, recover it, and use the, re uh, the receipts to pay back the Treasury notes. I think that's the most orderly way and the quickest way to clean up these banks. And, and I think it's very important because keep in mind, bank lending will be more important to the recovery of America and therefore to the recovery of the world than, uh, than all the stimulus spending. The president has proposed this massive program, but it's about 6% of GDP. We have a $13.5 trillion economy. Today, the American banks have $600 billion on deposit with the Federal Reserve, which means those things are available as reserves for loans, but not yet pledged to them. So they have a, a theoretical lending capacity of $6 trillion, much bigger than $880 billion, but they can't make those loans now because of the asset valuation problem. So I, I'm actually, uh, I think that's what should be done. And I don't think it's the state taking over the economy. I think that the government, look, central banks came into existence because of market failures and the need to manage debt and float debt. If you just look at the whole 300 year history of them. I mean, this is, I wouldn't say normal, but it is not without precedent. And it's pretty clear what has to be done, and I think they'll do it, and I think they'll do a good job of it. So actually, we should not call it uh, bad bank. We should call it ICU bank, intensive care unit bank uh, in some way. That's or better. Or rescue bank. Yeah, <laughs> big way, yeah, yeah, because when you come out of ICU, if, if you get good care, then you're healthy again. That's what I think is going to happen here.